last December, um, early December 2020, I published a, uh, a video called To Top Vent or Not To Top Vent, that is the question, uh, where I discussed and I wrestled with the idea about whether I should top vent or not to top vent. And I um, talked uh, about some research papers that I had read. Um, and I cited a few of the researchers that I uh, that I had read about. One was Bernard Mobus, a team turned off. And uh, another paper from the University of Wisconsin, or the University of Leeds. And... Um, you know, the one from, from Mobus simply stated uh, uh, a comment at the end of, of the paper, which stated that, uh, you know, we have um, created man-made problems and we need man-made solutions. And what the paper was essentially stating was, is that we have taken bees uh, out of their natural cavities in trees and we have put them into uh, wooden boxes the ability to manipulate frames in uh, thin wall uh, wood boxes and uh, and we expect them to winter well in those uh, conditions and what is it that we can do in these boxes in which we place these bees to assist them to winter better and uh, you know one of the items we were talking about was whether to vent, top vent, or not to top vent, and what does venting actually do, um, what does not top venting actually do to help the bees. Um, and yesterday, or earlier today, I published a, a video concluding my winter uh, experiment, as it were, if you want to call it that, observation. That's a better word. Uh, with all my hives, where I did not uh, top vent any of them. Um, and then I uh, presented that uh, to my followers through my YouTube channel. And that's the fabulous thing about, um, you know, the YouTube uh, channel and followers is that I get to connect, I get to show the other beekeepers what I am doing presented to them and they can immediately give me feedback on what they see maybe what they've done maybe something similar to what I've done or what they've heard about what what I've done and um, nothing is more true um, than one of my followers uh, wrote, wrote to me wrote a comment and it got me on a different track and one of the things that I didn't fully explain in my um, in my video was uh, the reasons why it may have worked and there were some things in there that mechanisms that were at work that I probably had no idea that there were they were even at, at work and so it it caused me to research it a little bit further and the following actually um, I'll talk about uh, what my follower wrote and what I have read since then about what he wrote uh, to get me to think about why um, no top venting may have worked and some of the mechanisms that are, are at work why my bees were maybe a little stronger um, than at any time in the past five years coming out of winter uh, and it just gets you to think and that's what I thoroughly enjoy about um, my YouTube channel and my YouTube followers is that I get that interaction um, almost real time between um, to get me to think and that's what fascinates me about beekeeping uh, is that it always makes me think. So have a look at, uh, at what uh, my follower had to say and um, what I have found out since he wrote that. So I just got done uploading a new video 
to YouTube about um, no upper entrances uh, as I wintered this past winter and the successes that came with it. Uh, I included some um, broodminder data charts that uh, showed the humidity levels within the hive, temperature levels within the hive. As we progress through winter, uh, even hitting a cold spell uh, and whatnot. And, um, you know, and that, that I, I, I uh, my suspicions that uh, no upper venting was necessary were surely confirmed, at least in this round. Now, obviously, I have to wait till next year to con confirm uh, uh, my results of uh of this year uh and then you know continue on uh tweaking things as we go but um one thing i really didn't um go into was the reasons why it might have uh had the successes that it had versus um an open en entrance above and um and this is why I love uh, my YouTube channel and doing YouTube videos, my ability to connect with other beekeepers. And it, it's not just a teaching tool for other beekeepers. This is a teaching tool for myself uh, where others can see things and respond back to me uh, to tell me what they might have seen, heard, read, or whatever as to the reasons why something may have been successful and uh, this was the case actually uh, today when I after I posted the video I've gotten quite a few comments and all have been a positive nature about uh, no upper venting uh, success stories as well um, but one of my followers mentioned something to me that I would have never given a scintilla of thought to for a hundred years probably it just never crossed my mind and that's why I love uh, interacting with my followers on YouTube um, and I'm just gonna read you what he wrote real quick and then and I'm gonna then I'm going to read uh, I, I, I did some research on it a little bit um, trying to look some things up and I'll read you what I what I found uh, he writes, in a recent presentation, Tom Seeley mentioned there's some recent research that indicates that upper entrances is not necessary. Ian Stepper uh, mentioned some something about the CO2 envelope. We know CO2 is used to knock out queens during artificial insemination. I'm starting to think that CO2 in the hive helps keep the colony inactive and the upper vent allows air exchange to remove that envelope. Um, it says maybe uh, CO2 helps keep them less active using less uh, honey resources uh, and thus the ability to starve out. Now, like I said, that was something that I never gave a scintilla of thought to. And, um, and I was wondering if it, if it had some merit at all. Um, Tom Seeley is, you know, uh, he, he does speak at the National Honey Show and whatnot. He's an anim, animal behaviorist. A scientist where he studies the social behavior in animals now he chose bees because of their social nature and so a lot of his research um, goes more into um, the feral colonies and their social interaction the diseases how they respond and whatnot and not a lot can translate or to uh, like a commercial operation you know he talks about separating hives 70 yards apart it's just not practical uh in the commercial industry which is why a lot of commercial beekeepers um 
might bash Tom a little bit, but you have to pick and choose what you uh, can use uh, from his research. There are certain things, um, like if you're into swarm catching, he's a great resource to learn how to catch swarms because he's, he's done it. Uh, his beeline experiments are fantastic uh, to find feral hives. Um, and, uh, and some of his research about the size of, of the feral cavity uh, what bees look for when they swarm, you know, that kind of thing can help you figure out what you want for size of your cavity to attract honeybee swarms. Uh, so that kind of stuff is actually very, very helpful, uh, mostly to hobbyists, but, uh, um, but he does have some good information. Like I said, you have to just kind of like pick and choose. One of them is about um, no upper entrance. Now, Anybody that knows anything about feral bees knows, I mean, pretty much they have one entrance. It's usually on the bottom of a hive. And uh, they need no, no, uh, um, they need no ent uh, upper entrance. They um, winter fairly well in their uh, tree cavities, probably because a lot of insulation because of the tree cavity itself. And uh, they keep smaller colonies and they swarm a lot. Those are some things that you can take from that. Obviously, in the commercial aspect of it, you can't have small colonies. You can't split it out unless you're just making bees, you know. But if you're into honey and commercial operations, that ain't going to do it for you uh, for controlled varroa. I'm getting a little off topic, but what I'm saying about Seeley is he does have some good information. Um, you just kind of have to pick and choose what you take from it. Um, and, and I know Ian has, has talked about the CO2 envelope I, in his shed, uh, you know, he has intake and exhaust vents to keep his t temperatures at a constant. And I'm just going to use American vernacular here, 40 degrees, uh, Fahrenheit, uh, all throughout the winter. Now, comparatively speaking here in, in, um, Wisconsin we have you know 40 degrees we we haven't had 40 degrees since November here you know mostly it's less than 15 degrees and uh, all the way down to minus 20 below um, Fahrenheit and so you would think that Ian's bees are more active during the winter given that it's warmer where he is However, keeping him in the shed as he does, um, there is a buildup of CO2. He also doesn't have upper entrances inside of his, his boxes, if you ever notice that. Um, because of the exchange of air that he has in, within his, within his um, shed, you know, he gets rid of the high CO2 levels within the shed but I am curious if he's ever measured tried to well, I don't even know if it's possible to measure what the CO2 levels are actually inside the, the boxes themselves uh, to see if there are they are there are elevated levels of, of CO2 um, inside that uh, that box um, but I'm also going to read you a little bit, an excerpt from a from a, an article, and I'll post a link to it on this video. Uh, this is uh, a 2016 article from Bee Culture Magazine. And uh, let's see if I can quickly find it here. And uh, the title of the, of the article was um, Winter Management. This is from October 21st, 2016. Uh, the author is, uh, William Hesbach, and he is a certified master beekeeper from Connecticut, um, and he does lectures and, you know, he's a, obviously a commercial beekeeper, uh, but he wrote this article which sort of talks about exactly what my follower had mentioned, and I just wanted to share with you what, what this man had to say. Uh, and he was, he was going on, he was talking about uh, 
puppies position their bodies specifically in the layer uh, so that their hairs interlace and uh, it acts kind of like duck down um, to help insulate uh, the, the cluster. Uh, anyways, as he says, as the body temperatures of the mantle bees fall, they generate heat by using their indirect flight muscles to shiver, which pretty much we all knew. Um, while shivering, the bees are using fuel, oxygen, and exhaling carbon dioxide. Their respiration, in combination with reduced ventilation, creates an environment with increased carbon dioxide and reduced levels of oxygen. Both these conditions would be toxic to humans, but to the bees, these alterations are intentional. The changed environment around the cluster induces the bees to an ultra low metabolic rate which conserves energy and traps some needed humidity. There are also, there, uh, there is also some research indicating high levels of carbon dioxide increase mortality of wintering Varroa. Um, you know, that paragraph is kind of an eye-opener and it's funny because I have actually read this article before and I kind of just skimmed this part to get to the parts that I wanted I don't even remember reading that part because it probably didn't interest me at the time or it was over my head I don't know what but all of a sudden the light bulb is kind of coming on here um, for me I mean, obviously, this information has been out there and people know about it. Uh, but, you know, the thousands of Internet uh, beekeepers out there passing on wrong information over and over and over again. Uh, like, you know, never pull a frame out from the middle. You know, stuff like that. Uh, or... You know, you have to have an upper vent when you winter bees to ex expel moisture. Um, sometimes it's good to experiment on your own and check out uh, new ways of doing things. Um, maybe going against the grain just to see for yourself. You know, um, you say, what does it hurt? You're right. You know, it could hurt. Uh, but beekeeping is an art and with experience comes wisdom and you just gotta sometimes just use your gut after you've been beekeeping for a little while by no means do I have this down and I am still learning which is why again I absolutely love uh, my YouTube channel and connecting with my followers and learning as much as I can because I've said this before I learn as much from you guys as as I hope I'm teaching uh, you. The intent of my channel was really not to try to instruct anybody on how to do things. It was more of, this is what I'm doing. Maybe it can help you. Give it a try. If it works, great. If it doesn't, at least you tried. That That's the intent of my channel. But something like this, I, you know, it just gives you pause to think. Not only, yes, it worked, but why did it work? What are the mechanisms that are going on uh, that the bees need that we're not, you know, capable? You know, the carbon dioxide is not a visual thing. We can't see that. You know, we don't, you know, we can't open a box and go, oh, yeah, there's a lot of carbon dioxide in here, you know. Uh, <laughs> It's just something that our thought processes aren't trained to do. Uh, but it does make sense, and people have obviously written about it and talked about it and studied it. So 
uh, it's food for thought for you in the future um, that maybe that there is there is really something to this uh, after you know like I said I've, I've been watching some of my beekeeping brethren across Wisconsin uh, wintering with no upper ventilation or very 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 minute upper ventilation and wrapping their hives and getting it a little bit warmer to where um, but it doesn't have to be so warm as to uh, make the bees over overly active inside the hive just so that they don't have to work near as hard to keep the mantle so warm that's more or less what what it's what it's about um, you know their ability to keep humidity levels stable oxygen levels where they want them you know humidity levels where they want them you got a breeze running through a hive they can't control anything and uh, so anyways again I just wanted to say thank you to the uh, to the, my follower that um, you know wrote that to me brought that to my attention I learned something today I hope maybe you um, learn something and uh, uh, and even if it you know maybe there isn't anything to this I think there is but maybe there isn't but either way it makes you sit back and think of why things work the way they do inside the colony till next time happy beekeeping remember all beekeeping is local take care everybody